often while you're using Sublime Text, you may have a need to run an external program. For example, to compile a program so that you can run it or to tell your web browser to open and display a web page that you're working on. The easiest way to do that is to set up a build system in Sublime Text. So in this video, let's talk about the basics of build systems. Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here. Welcome to this video on the basics of build systems. Now before we get started, as a reminder, if you're finding these videos helpful, please thumb and subscribe as appropriate. And if you have any comments or questions about the content of this video, other videos, or suggestions for other videos you'd like me to make, drop those down in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at odatnerd. The topic of today's video though is the basics of build systems. Now this is a pretty big topic, so we will be going uh, through several videos for this. And in particular, we're not to going to go super in depth into all the options that are available. So down in the video description, there is a link to the official Sublime Text documentation on build systems that's gonna flesh out a lot of what we're talking about here. The example we're going to do here is compiling and running a C program. Now don't worry if you're not a C programmer, what we're doing here isn't directly specific to C at all. Uh, I just happen to be a C programmer. So we can see I have a simple C program here and in C you need to compile your C program to an object file and then link the object file to an executable, then run the executable. There's actually a build system in Sublime that's set up to do that, assuming you have the correct compiler installed. On this system, I don't have the GNU compiler library set up, but what I do have is something called TinyCC or TCC. There's a link to it in the description if you happen to be interested in that sort of thing. And TCC is a small tool that allows you to run C programs. Uh, it compiles them uh, very fast as compared to other things, and you can actually use it as a scripting language. So, you know, highly recommended. For our purposes, for an example build system, we're going to set up to be able to use TCC from Sublime Text. Now, build systems live here in the Tools Build System menu. Now, we can see here there are a few build systems that are already in this list. These are all build systems that ship directly with Sublime Text. Depending on what packages you have installed, other build systems might appear here. There's an option at the top labeled automatic, which we're gonna come back and check in just a moment. But if you wanna create your own build system, the easiest way to do that is to pick this new build system entry from down here at the bottom of the menu. Now, if you remember the video that we did when we we're talking about how to use plugins. This has the exact same functionality as that. It creates a stub for you to allow you to get your build up and running quicker. And uh, it all automatically try to save your build file in the proper directory. So uh, we're going to go ahead and save this. And you'll see it's offering to save it as untitled.sublimebuild. I'm going to name it tinycc.sublime-build and hit enter. And now if we go back to the tools menu and go back to build system, we can see that down here, TinyCC is now listed as a build system. Build systems you create are added to this menu using their names. Now what I'm gonna do is come up here and pick automatic. Now if you check any one of these particular items here, not this one, but these other ones, that tells Sublime directly that's the build system that you would like to use. If you use this option, which is generally recommended, unless you have very specific needs, this will allow Sublime to automatically detect what build system it should be using at any particular point. So you can sort of set it and forget it, if you will. So I'm gonna pick that here. Now I have a, a build system that I've pre-generated for this, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it in like that. Now there's a few things going on in this file, but we're going to go over them one at a time. The first thing to note is shell command and command. These both specify the actual command or shell command or command prompt typing that you want to execute. You want to use only one of the two of them, not both, as I have done here. This is just for uh, example purposes and explanatory purposes. Shell command, as we can see, takes a string and in fact is actually literally the command that you would type into a terminal on your computer to do something. 
Command, on the other hand, instead of taking a single string, takes an array of strings. And in this case, the first item here, TCC, is the name of the program that should be directly uh, executed. And the remainder of the items are command line arguments. Now, the dollar file is special in this case. It's a build system variable. Sublime expands that when the build system executes to be the name of the currently executed file. So the result in both of these cases is that TCC will be invoked with the command line argument of run and the name of the current file. Why you would use one of these over the other? Well, as we can see in the first case in shell command, there are sing there are double quotes around dollar file, and that's because the file name may have spaces in it. It's very common uh, under Windows to have that sort of thing happening. And in that case, as we know, you need to double quote your files to make sure that the program that you're running knows that it's a full file name. You don't have to do that if you use command because that whole argument, that third argument, is purely just file name. And as we can see, because this is a JSON file, you do need to do a little bit of extra work to quote those double quotes. Generally speaking, shell command is usually the more uh, versatile of these options. It allows you to also do things like redirections and concatenations of files and anything that you could type into a command prompt. The next item under those two is the file regex. Now this is used by Sublime to be able to recognize in build output when errors are happening so that you can jump to the appropriate location. And this one is taken directly from the build system that ships with Sublime Text for using something for C. There's more information on this in that link I talked about in the description, so I'm not going to go into any too much detail on what that's doing here. What you put there depends on the error output that your particular tool creates, if any. You don't need a file regex, for example, if you're running a program that never generates error messages, or if you don't want to navigate them. Working dir is a key that tells Sublime that when it's executing this, what directory should be made the current directory or the current working directory. And the same way dollar file expands to the name of a current file, dollar file path expands to the name of the path that that file is in. Again, this is not something that's strictly necessary, but can come in handy. For example, if you're working on a program that wants to save its output into a file or expects to open its input from a file that exists in the same directory as the program itself, that might not work if the current directory isn't the same as the directory where the program is sitting. That's when you would use working directory. And selector is something that allows Sublime to be able to automatically detect when a build system applies. And we're not going to go into any detail on that. There's a video on the channel on scopes and scope selectors if you're not sure what you should put there or what that particular option is doing. Okay, now for our current purposes, as I said, you only want to use one of shell command or command. So I'm going to comment out command and save that. And now we can go ahead and jump over to the C program and execute it and see what happens. So we're over here. Now, in order to actually execute the build, you use Control B or Super B. These options are available up here in the Tools menu. You can see there is an option called Build. So I'm going to pick that now. And then we see there are, we're getting prompted with a command, uh, sorry, a quick panel here because we've told Sublime to automatically select the build system and it knows that there are three different build systems that currently exist that know how to, or proclaim they know how to anyway, build a C file. The C single file, the C single file run, and tiny CC. The first two are ones that ship with Sublime, so we're going to go ahead and pick the one that we just finished creating. And as we can see, when I pick it, it says hello world down there in the output panel. So this has successfully executed. Similarly, if I was to go ahead up into this file and break it, say for example by forgetting the semicolon here, I can go ahead and just press the key to build. 
And a couple of things to note here. The first is it didn't prompt me with a panel again because it remembers what I picked last time and assumes I want to keep using that. Secondly, this time there is an error. And I have to bring my mouse in for this to scroll this panel up. But we can see that it generated a message that said in the file C users ODAT nerd desktop hello.c at line 7, there was an error and the error was it expected a semicolon got return instead. Now this is because this code is broken. And we can also see that there is an inline error being displayed pointing at the start of line 7 that's telling me the exact same information. I can go ahead and close that. And something else to note is even if the cursor is up here or maybe even in a different file altogether, if you double click on one of these errors, it automatically jumps you to the appropriate file and shows you the error location. Now here, as I said, we're not getting a uh, line or column positioning in our errors because this tool just doesn't happen to generate those sorts of messages. But if your tool did, then that would actually work and I can fix that and go ahead and run the build again. And that's it. The basics of build systems are just that easy. Just a simple command line that you need to execute and some instructions to tell Sublime when to execute it and how to detect errors. In upcoming videos, we're going to go into more detail and what you can do with these because they are, build systems are very powerful. Uh, until then, as a reminder, uh, if you like these videos, if you're finding them helpful, thumb and subscribe as appropriate. If you have any comments or questions on this video or any videos, or there's a topic on Sublime you'd like me to cover in a future video, drop those in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter. Twitter on at Odat Nerd. Until then, this is Odat Nerd asking you to have a sublime day.